Hi guys, today I have a really cool video for you because in the end I think most of the people who are using Rivet are, I mean most lots of people are prototyping, but there's also lots of people who want to automate something. I mean, let's have an example. Maybe you want to have um, your personal AI secretary and you want to write some emails. Let's assume we have a letter intent like, yeah, there's Christmas wishes we need to, uh, need to sign to someone and the recipient is called Santa Claus and we have a relationship as family, so it should be a rather un informal, not formally, yeah, not formal mail. And now we want the email content for that. And we also want to send a sick leave announcement to our boss and, and so on. And if you want to do things like that in Rivet, I mean, yeah, you can read in files from your PC to, to read in the data. If you use a plugin, you can write the data out in files, but it's all on your local machine. It's not in the cloud. It's, I don't know. I personally think that Rivet has, uh, yeah, is a bit lacking in these regards. Um, so let's just use Airtable. That's what we are here on because Airtable is pretty cool um, because they have a free tier, which has basically no limits that really matter. You can, Use the API as much as you want. There is no time limit. You don't need to add payment data. You can um, create unlimited tables and bases. And the only thing is, okay, it's only 1000 records per, per, per base. Okay, so you cannot do gigantic um, tables, but come on. I, I know for a free tier, this is pretty cool. So what I will show you now is first of all, let's just run this and let's see what happens because uh, we have the graph and we will just run it. And basically what we are now doing is we are pushing the, the information I just showed you, the, the, yeah, the information about the email um, contents we need um, into uh, to ChatGPT. And then we are um, going to update the tables, but I will show you the, the details of that later. Okay, so as we can see here, the last thing we have status codes 200 for updating. So we should actually be finished with that. Let's get back and see. On, ah, yeah, there we are. So now we actually have four emails. Let's look at the first one, which was to Santa Claus. Yeah, I hope this message finds you well and not too overwhelmed with the festive seasons, hustle and bustle as we gather around the warmth of family and friends. So yeah, we requested a more, more non-formal email. We got one. Let's look here. What do we have? We have the email to our boss for sick leave. And yeah, we have a... a Obviously, we have a rather severe flu and unfortunately, we cannot come to the office. I mean, yeah, exactly what we wrote here. But I mean, you see, this is the cool thing. Now we have basically, we defined some inputs and it can be whatever we want. And we can get the output. And we immediately have it now in the cloud available in tables. And we can we can get to further stuff with it. We can exit it from other tools, whatever we want. So I think this is super, super useful. So let me show you how it's done. Um, so first of all, of course, you need an Airtable account. You will not get around that. But as I said, it's free, so no issues there. Then, um, actually at the beginning, let's go to the homepage here. You will need to create a workspace and some tables in there. But to be honest, this is pretty self-explanatory. I think you will figure that out. So I will not cover it deep in here. This is easy. Um, but then the, the one important thing is you need to go to the developer hub. And in here, you have to create a personal access token. So I already created one here, which is called Rivet Test, which I'm using at the moment. But let me quickly show how it works. You just press create new token and then you give it a name. And now there is basically two things you need to set. There's the scope. So this is basically what is this token allowed to do? And for our use case, we need to, to read uh, records from tables. So we need this data records read. And we need to write because we also want to write down the results later. So we need this data records write. And then you need to define what, um, yeah, where it has access. And for example, here, I selected my Rivet test uh, environment. And then you press create token. And yeah, you get your token. So here it is. You just copy it out. And that's it. And before we now move to, to uh, Rivet, let me just quickly show. Um, basically, there is um, they have, an, of course, an, an API reference here. And there's basically two functions we are going to use. One is uh, list records. 
which is a very, very simple function. We just need to do a get request to some URL where we need to add some base ID and some table ID or some app ID could be called. And then we get the, all the records from a table. So this is to, to get the data we want to, to, to work with. And then we need to update records. And this is a bit more complex because of course now we need to pass in some data that is supposed to be updated. And sadly, I found out that Rivet does not support patch requests. So we cannot just update this one field which has no data yet um, because we need to do a put request and the put request is a destructive update. So we need to put in all the fields, but yeah, it's, it's minor things uh, can be worked around with. Okay, let's go to Rivet. Okay, as you can see here, uh, let me maybe unclear the outputs for the second to make it a bit easier to see. Um, the project, this is basically our main graph and it's neatly organized into subgraphs and different things, so it's not that complicated. And I also wrote some small instructions here. But basically, the one thing we will need is the, the Airtable token. Um, I like to use uh, get to use to get this from the context. So you go to project and you add a new context value here. You call it Airtable token. And then you put the value of the token here. This is just a, uh, yeah, a good practice so that if you share the project, your token will not get, uh, yeah, no, no one else will receive your token. And the second, so this will then automatically appear here once you run the graph. And the second thing is, um, yeah, to put, uh, you need the full URL to the table you want to use. So I made it simple that you don't have to manually extract this app and this table ID, this will be done automatically. So you just copy the, if you're in the table, just copy the whole URL in the browser and insert it here and everything else will be taken care of. And then there are three steps we are going to do. First, we are calling a subgraph to list uh, the app table records. Then we will handle each record and then we will update each record. I mean, of course, this here below could also be done in bulk, but uh, I thought it, were, it was simpler to do it this way because we're not updating thousands of, uh, yeah, uh, of uh, entries at the same time. Just a small list in this case. Okay, and let's have a rough overview. I'm, I'm not sure if I should go too deep into it. Um, but let's take a rough view at what's because it might be take too long, but let's take a rough view. So first, um, now we have, uh, we are inserting this air table token, uh, this air table URL and the token into our first subgraph. As we can see here, the, the subgraph then also has those two inputs token and air table URL. And then we actually have two subgraphs again. One, uh, which just um, uses some regex to extract those two um, parts from the URL. Um, yeah, again, if you want to create something on this your own, just ask ChatGPT for it. I did not write that. <laughs> Very simply put, uh, because that that is also too, gets, getting too complex for me. Um, and then we are also creating uh, the authorization headers or the headers in general will be neat. And we use both of those things in multiple parts. So that's why we put them in new sub graphs. So let's go in here and actually maybe let's run the graph so that we can see values everywhere. Maybe it makes a bit more sense. So, so we are getting our headers with our, with our bearer token in. We are getting the two IDs we need. And now for the first request, which is very simple, we just need to build this URL, which consists out of the app ID and the table ID. That is what we are doing in this text field here with two variables. And then we are sending all that into an HTTP call, which then returns us a nice JSON object of our records. So basically here is now the information. And I mean, this level here doesn't really make sense. So we are extracting everything in that here. And now you can see, we have a wonderful, yeah, easily digestible array of our information. We know the record IDs and we have all the fields and the data. And as we already, I mean, I did run it two times now, we already have data from the previous, uh, yeah, from the email content that was previously added. Most likely if, yeah, the table would, this would have been empty, this field, then this field would just not be in this list. 
Okay, and then we output this uh, this array. And then let's go back to the main graph. Then we are coming out here and going to the handle Airtable record subgraph. And most important thing here is again, I mean, I'll explain it in other videos, is this icon here. Because this means that we enable splitting. And what splitting means is that this array here automatically gets um, split into parts. And basically we are now doing like a for each operation. So every single sub array, every single array, uh, part of the array, entry of the array, sorry, is separately going in this. So it looks like this. This is like the first, uh, sorry, this is the default value. We uh, did it for testing. Let's remove that. Uh, this is the first entry for the first run. First, we are writing uh, an email to Cornelia Klaus, and then the second one is the one to Santa Klaus, and so on. So you can see every entry is separately getting sent in here. And now what we are doing is we are just prompting ChatGPT. So I'm telling it it's a secretary and drops to write emails, it's very lazy, gets little information, you cannot ask questions, you only reply with email content and so on. I mean, random stuff, we can do whatever we want here. And we also add the user content. And now this is, in this case, a bit stupid because we are already telling the email content. That was not the plan. So let's actually go once back once more and make run this again so that we have this clearer. So I will remove this data and because now it's really getting in our way. We cannot properly see anymore. Okay, let's get back to Rivet and let's run the graph one more time. Okay, and now we can see, yeah, usually we would only give him, we are lazy, he would only get this information from us that we are the recipient, who the recipient is, what the relationship is, and so on. And this is going to, to ChatGPT, and now ChatGPT is writing our emails. Okay, now, because we, yeah, don't have the ability to do the patch request, as I said before, we need to rebuild this whole object here with the fields and all the fields and the previous content of the fields and the new content. So basically, yeah, we are pulling out the original content, like the original value for the recipient, for relationship, for letter intent, and adding the new field and then put it from, from up here and putting it all together. So this is now our new table uh, ob um, object for this row, which, um, yeah, is now previously did not have the email content, now it has it. And then we are outputting this and we are also outputting the ID from here because we need to know what the record ID is so that we can update it later. Okay, and then we are back here and we are directly going to the subgraph 3, which means that where we are going to update the Airtable records. Let's jump in. And here it's pretty much not so much different. We are again creating our headers. So using this subgraph up here, this function, we are getting the IDs from the URL again. Now we are putting it together a new URL, which is in one is a bit different because it also includes the record ID, but that's, yeah, not hard. We are doing a put call this time and we need a body and the body is our fields we want to have. Yeah, and to, to be able to check if everything is working, we are outputting the status code so that in the end, we can just look here and if this is everything is 200 then yeah that worked but um if there are other values showing up then there has been some errors we can easily go in and debug it yeah um basically that's it as you can see i removed it again now it, we are back and having our email text again so um i think this is a really cool way that you can um yeah, actually uh, um, start um, con do the configurations for, for some jobs here and can get the results here. You can, of course, also write the results into different or separate tables. That's also all possible, but I just wanted to show you uh, yeah, a simple use case. As always, I hope you uh, found this helpful. Please like and subscribe or comment uh, to get me going a bit. Uh, yeah, and see you. Bye.